Hi, I'm Raymond with Three Dudes Quilting in Phoenix, Arizona, and we're proud to have our friend Nedra Sorensen here today from Triangles on a Roll. I always like products that do more than one thing. This makes flying geese, but it also makes wonderful, wonderful braids like the one that we see behind us here on the wall. So you're going to see how to make braids the easy way, precise and exact every time using Triangles on a Roll. Nedra, it's all yours. Thanks, Ray. One of the wonderful things about Triangles on a Roll is there's many different products that we have. Uh, a lot of times people think, oh, we just make half square triangles, but you can also do different sew and fold products. One of the things we have is that we have papers that make braids. And one of the reasons I love this is it holds all those bias edges perfectly in place. And uh, it just makes it easy to do. So I wanted to show you a little bit about our product. All of our rolls, including our braids, come on 50 foot rolls. On this product, as Ray said, you can either make flying geese or you can make braid on the very same paper. So I'm going to show you how we make the braid. First thing you do is you have a wrapper on the outside. All of the instructions that I'm telling you today are also on the outside. They're also written on the inside on the paper. So if you can't remember one thing I say, it's okay. You just need to pull out your paper and it'll have the instructions there. So I like when I first get a roll is I take that label off and I stick it inside the tube. That way I always have my directions with me and the size that I'm working with because these braids come in five different sizes. You can make them all the way from a 3.2 inch wide braid all the way up to an 8 inch wide braid. So once you've pulled off that um, and put it inside your tube, I like to use these little rubber bands that you can get at the dollar store and I wrap those around, it doesn't cut into the paper, and then I can keep using this and using this. Because you get 50 feet, you're going to be able to do a lot of projects with one roll. So the first thing you want to decide is how wide you want your braid to be. You can use this braid on a lot of different types of projects, and I'll show you a few at the end. So the first thing you want to do is decide how wide you want your braid. And then each paper will tell you the size to cut the strips for that braid. Today I'm showing you the 7 inch. On the 7 inch, it tells you the size, the width to cut your braid, and the length. And let me read this here if I have my glasses on. I think it says that it's 1 and 3 eighths by 6 inches. And then I'll cut my length that I want. Because it's hard to work with a long length. I'll take one end, roll it up, and secure it with a paper clip. You can just do a large paper clip or you can do those little wonder clips. Those are pretty strong and hold it down. For the um, braid, because these papers can make either flying geese or braid, you have different colors of lines on your paper. For the braid, we're just going to work with the red lines. You're going to ignore all the others. Those are for the flying geese directions. So on this, you just want to work within your red lines. The very first thing you want to do is in between two red lines there on a diagonal, you want to pin a little triangle. You can either pin or you can use a little dab of glue, whatever you prefer, to hold it in place. Step two, you will lay your very first strip along the right side and along the top edge. And you will sew a quarter inch seam. This is a sew and fold method and you just sew and fold. And notice it just takes it over to that next red line. To do your strip on the other side. You will lay it along the left side and along the top edge there and you just sew a quarter inch seam and you just sew and fold. The nice thing about this is it just keeps them even, even as you sew. And then you're ready to go on to your next side. You'll just take your next strip lay it along the right side and the red line that goes this way and sew a quarter inch, sew and fold. 
and you just keep doing that over and over and over. Now every once in a while when you fold it over you'll notice it didn't go all the way to that red line. It's okay, this is a very forgiving technique. If you look and see that it didn't go all the way over, when you lay your next piece down, just lay it down exactly where it should go. It assumes that you sewed it in the right place and it folded over. Just lay it down and sew your quarter inch seam and sew and fold and it will correct itself in the seam allowance. So you just keep sewing and folding all the way up. It's a great way to use up your scraps. I did this table runner here behind us in an, in an afternoon and I just cut up all my leftover red scraps and I did three different rows. I just sew and fold. I did the length of my table. You can do whatever length you want and I put three together. When I sewed this one to this one, I didn't even match up seams. I just put them together, sewed them, and you'll notice because they're on the paper, every point matches up perfectly. That's why I say triangles on a roll is easy, it's accurate, it's a great way to use up what you have. The braid can be placed on a lot of different things. You can use it for borders. We made this iPad cover. Uh, we've got this as a free pattern when you buy a product and I think Ray carries it here at Three Dudes. We've got this iPad cover uh, pattern also. Um, it's easy to make. The only difference between these two iPad covers is that on one side we used a dark fabric and on another side we used a patterned fabric and it gives you that look for a border that's, I think, it makes you look like you're a perfectionist and you really know what you're doing. Instead, it's just easy, sew and fold. Um, say you've got a lot of scraps left over, which most of us do when you make a quilt. We also have a free pattern that you can do um, a pillowcase. And a lot of times people will do a pillowcase as they give a gift of a quilt and they'll stick that quilt inside the pillowcase. You can make matching pillowcases to go with your quilts or even use it as a gift bag. So there's a lot of ideas and ways to use this braid. I like it, like I say, because it just holds it perfectly in place, makes every seam accurate. Um, oh, let me just mention one more thing. When you're done at the end, when you get to the end, you'll just fill in the sides when you finally get to the top, and then you just turn it over and trim it there, and then you're ready to sew it in your project. One of the things people ask me often is, when do I tear the paper off? Especially on these braids, I recommend once you've turned it over and you've trimmed your little edges off there, I would sew it into that project, then tear the paper off. Um, it holds that paper. You want it to do its job. You want it to hold all those bias edges in place. Sew it into your project. Sew your bias or whatever, um, your um, borders around it then tear off your paper. Um, you can get your kids to help you tear off the paper, your husband, um, your grandkids. It's fun, put on a good movie. I, we, we do it, we just put on a good movie and sit down and tear off that paper. And uh, it's easy to do because you've lowered your stitch to 1.5 when you've sewn that seam. It just makes it easy to tear off in the end. It really does tear off easy. Wait, that's triangles on a roll, our braid. Thanks so much, Ray. Well, I'm really excited. It gives me a lot of cool ideas. And again, using up your scraps is the way to go. We will always sell you good fabric at Three Dues, but use it all. Use what you buy.